In this video, I'll walk through a few examples of finding the antiderivative. First, I'm going to explain what it means to have an antiderivative. Let's say we have some function, and that function we'll call f of x, like in our first example. Well, the antiderivative, the notation for the antiderivative, is the capital F of X, capital F of X. And that's just a standard notation. So for G of X, we'll have capital G of X for the antiderivative. Now what it means to have an antiderivative is that the first derivative of this, so this capital F of X, if we took the first derivative, we would get back to f of x. So it's kind of like undoing a derivative. So you look at f of x as, as though it is the, the end result after you took the derivative of something. And then let's go back to this capital F of x. So let's start that. Capital F of x, I'll write. Capital F of x, the antiderivative, equals, and you think about this as, what would you have to take the derivative of to get back to 3x squared? Well, I know I'd have to take the derivative of x to the third, because when we uh, take the derivative, we reduce the exponent by 1. So to take the antiderivative, we have to add 1 to the exponent. And then this is, you can, you can think of this conceptually or just remember the procedure. Add 1 to the exponent and then divide by that, um, divide the coefficient by that new exponent. So we had 3 divide by 3. And what that ends up with is giving us 1 as a coefficient, so that if we had 3 times 1, we would get the 3 coefficient that, that we want. How about on the next one, the next term here? Plus, we know it's going to be an x squared. I'm going to say the coefficient that we see, 26 divided by 2. So this becomes 13, and now we can see what would happen. 2 times 13 would give us 26. And uh, the derivative of x squared, you, you reduce that exponent by 1 to get x to the first. Minus, anytime you see a constant, that's easy. Just multiply it by the uh, variable, because the derivative of negative 9x is just negative 9. We always have to put a constant here, so plus c for the constant, because if you took the derivative of some constant, you would end up with 0, so we don't know uh, whether or not there's some some number out here that's non-zero. So we have to account for the possibility of that being there. Now I'll just clean this up a little bit. Capital F of X equals 1 times X to the third plus 13X squared minus 9X plus C. All right, that's the answer on the first one. The next one, G of X, I'll say, I'm going to rewrite this one before I go to the antiderivative. Small G of X equals 1 over x plus, I'm going to keep this as 4 times x to the negative 2. Now there's a reason I did that. And the reason is this 1 over x is a little bit easier to, to identify as being the derivative of the natural log of x. So, so don't, don't uh, try to add 1 to this and get x to the 0. That's, that's the one, I guess, common mistake that beginning calculus students will make is to kind of forget that because they remember this very well, this adding 1 to the exponent, but there's that one case where if you have 1 over x, which is the same as x to the negative 1, that the antiderivative of that is just natural log of x. After you do it a couple of times, you're golden. Uh, you won't have a problem with that. But again, if we were to take the derivative of natural log of x, we would get 1 over x. So that's the, that's the correct antiderivative. Plus, now, we're going to increase this exponent by 1. So x to the negative 1, because um, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And then we're going to divide by this new exponent, so 4 over negative 1. Remember the constant, so I'll clean this up. g of x, capital G of x, the antiderivative, equals the natural log of x minus, because 4 divided by 1, minus 4 over x, I can write it in that fashion now because x to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over x, plus c. So I'll put a box around that just to make sure it doesn't get confused with the line above it. 
Okay, this last one looks kind of weird, but it's actually kind of one of the easiest ones on the board here. Capital H of X, the antiderivative. Well, if you take the derivative of e to the x, you get e to the x again. So the antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Now, if you had something in the um, multiplied by x up here, if it was e to the 2x, we'd have some more to, to worry about that. But for now, it's just e to the x. If there's no, no other thing multiplied by x in that exponent. e to the x. Now, um, what do you have to take the derivative of to get negative sine x? That is cosine of x positive cosine of x. And those pluses and, and um, minuses, positives and negatives in the trigonometric can can sneak up on you. you. You can make careless mistakes. Even if you know that the derivative of cosine of x should be negative sine of x, it's easy to make that mistake. So just kind of stay on top of it. Go through it. A nice way to check your work is just to go through this, take the derivative again, and see if you get back to that uh, small h of x as you should.